Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just want to give a brief introduction to this video. And this video is about most likely the nicest 300D in the world. Um, and this car has been inspected personally by me on a lift. <clears throat> it has been to Pierre Hidari down in Titusville, Florida. And uh, it has also been to Jamie Kopchinski at Classic Workshop up in New Jersey. And we have, you know, the three leading shops in the country for uh, the classic diesels. Now, they also work on gas cars. I specialize in diesels. But the point is, we have all inspected this car in person. And this is the real deal, guys. So hang tight. At the end of the video, I'm going to try to splice in video conferences that I had with those guys so you can hear their opinions. And you're going to see me meeting the owner inspecting the vehicle, putting the vehicle on a lift. You're going to see every detail. So it's a little bit of a long video, but if you're a hardcore 123 enthusiast and you're looking to purchase and you're looking to purchase the nicest 300D in the world, what I personally think is the nicest one in the world, just stick with me through this video, watch the whole thing. Let's get started. Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So uh, I'm actually in Montreal, Canada. I forgot to record the video at the airport explaining what was going on because I was so excited about this trip. Um, but I am here with a gentleman in Montreal, Canada. and. Uh, he called me, he was referred to me through Pierre Hadari. I know most of you guys know Pierre. And uh, he called me and said, John, I have a 1500 mile 1985 300D. 1500 mile guys. So this might be the lowest mile 300D in the country, if, if not the world. I don't know, maybe there's one with that mileage in the Stuttgart Museum. The vehicle is actually, uh, was titled in Florida. The gentleman has a, a home in Florida and it was titled in the United States. So it's a US spec vehicle. Um, it's just in Canada right now. So anyway, I'm gonna, I think I may be importing this back into the United States and uh, you guys may see a 1500 mile 300D show up on the website soon. So hang tight and uh, uh, we'll interview the owner. I'll let you guys see the car. We're gonna get it up on the lift. We're gonna, we're gonna do the whole uh, inspection of the vehicle today. So I'll see you in a, in a second. Okay guys, after about a two hour drive from uh, Montreal, we're pulling into Bay St. Paul or St. Paul Bay. And this is where Samuel uh, has the car stored in his, uh, his garage at his house. And it's just, uh, there's already snow on the ground. It's November 1st, but uh, you can imagine what this would look like in the spring and summertime. It's just beautiful out through there so we're gonna we're gonna be to the cars soon all right guys we're just cruising through uh, uh, st. Paul Bay this is the downtown area I promise we're getting to the car soon I'm just laying uh, giving you guys the landscape here of where I am we are way out gosh two and a half hours from Montreal and this is just a beautiful you know French city there we are. We're about to pull in to Samuel's house, and I just asked him to stop here. This is St. Paul Bay, and there's the town right down there, about two and a half hours outside of Montreal. Absolutely beautiful up here. All right, guys, we have made it. We are at uh, Samuel's place, and uh, we're about to go into the garage and check out possibly the lowest mile 300D. The lowest mile I've ever heard of. I don't want to say in the world, but it might be the lowest mile in the world. So let's take a peek here. All right, guys, we're walking up here to the garage. That garage is 
nicer than some houses I've seen. But uh, we're about to peek in here and see this low mileage vehicle. Everyone, this is Samuel. This is who's been the caretaker of this vehicle for the last couple of years. Wow, check this out. What an amazing man cave. Samuel, this is awesome. To the ladies. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Now this is the, uh, is this the CD? Oh wow, look at that. That's the first girl. So guys, this is an 85300 CD. This one's actually not for sale. I'm just showing you the cards in the video. This is a 35,000 mile 85300 CD in petrol. Guys, here she is right here. This is the unicorn. This is an 85300D with 1,500 miles on it. I just got to take this in for a second. <laughs> wow. You won't get to see this uh, every day. You know what? I have never seen anything like this. Oh my God, it, it looks like it, it's brand new. Holy cow. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this, Samuel. Hey, let me walk over here. Let's see the mileage. There we go, guys. I don't know if you can see that. 1,583 miles. Wow, guys, look at this. Look at these seats. And guys, I'm gonna, we're gonna pull it out of the garage here. We're, we're gonna do that tomorrow. Um, this is just, I literally just got here from the airport. Wow, look at that dash. Holy cow. Never been kissed. <laughs> Samuel, I, I've never seen a 300D like this ever. I've seen some of the nicest ones in the world and I've had them come through the shop. This is incredible. Look at this paint, you guys. This is just ridiculous. You know, Scott does an amazing job buffing and polishing cars. You've seen the videos, and this looks like it's been with Scott for three days. This is just remarkable. Even the grommet on the antenna is still intact. It's not even torn. I see you got a nice protective uh, mat back here so it doesn't fade in the back. Let's go up here and look at the engine compartment. Look at all that beautiful zinc plating. Guys, that is as good as it gets. Um, Samuel, this belongs in the museum in Germany. This belongs in the Mercedes Museum. I maybe, would have to agree with you. Maybe I should just call them, see if they want to, see if they want to buy it. Now, is this still the tag? This the is antifreeze? the tag right there. <laughs> wow, look at that. Got the original Mercedes. We're still, we're aware of 2003. Still has the sticker on the valve cover. This car oh, Look at the, the thing that blows me away are these headlight bezels. Because I hunt all over the country buying old stock headlight bezels to restore on the cars. And that is just incredible. 38, you're, you're correct. Um, that, that's the original hood pad too. Holy cow. And the other one's just as nice. Yeah, so, sorry, next to it, guys, is uh, an 85-300CD. Yeah, it's a... Now, this one has 30... This is a California car. See how the uh, air cleaner housing is mounted over here? Um, gosh, look at the zinc, zinc plating on this. It's just as good. Just as beautiful. Yeah, these are the... Uh, these are probably the two nicest ones I've, I've ever seen, Samuel. I you. Yeah, look at that. The two nicest ones I've ever seen. 35,000 miles. Holy cow. Take a peek in this one. Worth the trip. Oh my God, yeah. Atlanta, I hope. Yeah, these cars are worth coming 
all the way to two and a half hours north of Montreal from Atlanta. I love this color. So again, guys, the petrol one is not for sale. He's keeping the coupe for a little while. This is also, this man cave is incredible. We got, we can chill out on the couch, overlooking uh, St. Paul Saint Bay, right. have a have a nice cigar with the uh, two beauties parked behind us here. Guys, look at these bunt wheels. Look at that bunt wheel. I mean, it's, uh, it's brand new. <laughs> That's crazy. And Samuel, didn't you say you had the original tires? I had the original tires of the car. They're, they're in storage right here. So this comes with original tires too. Yes. Original tires are original rims. Wow, that is awesome. Now, are these the original rims that are on it, or you have those on the tires? Up the in original tires and rims are mounted. Okay, okay. Let's take a peek under here. Wow, look at that. That has never been out of the car. And you can see lug bolts have never been installed because the zinc plating has never been interfered with. You see that? And, and then the tool kit's never been opened. Yeah, the original tool kit in the original plastic bag. That's remarkable. And what are these right here? It's just for humidity if there's any. Oh, that yeah. absorbs any moisture that yeah. gets in here? Yeah, nice. It smells nice. Uh, now, are these the original uh, lug bolts? Yes, I believe they are. Wow, check that out. Absolutely incredible. These, uh, so I thought these were the original bunts, uh, but those aren't. Those have some uh, newer tires on them. But Samuel has the original bunts with the original tires still mounted. And uh, we're going to climb up there and get them out of storage so I can show you guys. Okay, guys, I've climbed up on the ladder and you can see here. Uh, these are the original tires, uh, and right here, see it says Continental and it has the curb protector right there. Uh, these are original, and those are the original bunts. Um, there's another original spare. Let me move these out of the way here. And there you go. You can see back here, there is the other three original bunts with the original tires. I'm not going to bring them down because they're, they're up here in storage, but you can see, like, look at the back of them. I don't think they, were these ever used? <laughs> they look like they've never been installed. There we go, right front. That's so cool. Where are you ever going to see that again, guys? So let me put these back and climb down off this ladder. Just wanted you to see the original tires with the original bunts in perfect mint condition. I'll introduce you to Samuel and... uh he can tell you a little bit about the car and we're going to pull this outside tomorrow. It's, it's getting kind of dark now. We'll pull this outside, do some nice walk around footage, and then I'm going to put it up on the lift and we're going to go through the undercarriage uh, so you can see what basically a brand new 300D looks like. So anyway, we will be back in a second. Guys, this is Samuel. Sorry if that light's shining right in your eyes, but uh, we're, we're headed out to dinner. We're going to have some French cuisine tonight <laughs> since we're in... Uh, this is an all French town, but uh, why not? Samuel, where in the world did you find this car? <laughs> I mean, how did this happen? Uh, you know, just some, I would say, first of all, uh, some research and of course, two, some patience and three, persistence. And uh, throughout the years, I wait, 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 look. And then uh, that car came up on the market in the US and then I was able to uh, quickly react upon it to speak to the owner and uh, also I had to do my due diligence and sent a well-known Mercedes connoisseur who went and assessed the car for me. I think everybody knows who this is. Mr. Uh, Jamie. Jamie and, uh, in, in New Jersey. Discussions with Mr. Hidari. Pierre and Hidari. They, they both came to the conclusion the car was an exceptional car and fine. And as a result of uh, their good advice, I took the car and and then brought it home to Canada. Now you, you bought it from the original owner, is that right? I bought it from the original from the collector at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think you, you told me immediately when you had the car, you shipped it straight to Pierre, Pierre, Pierre Hidari down in uh, Titusville. And Pierre had the car for a few weeks and went through everything. A to but, 
But then he called you and said, you need to get this car out of here. Yes, he, he said, <laughs> he was getting a little bit anxious and nervous saying that the car, uh, also known as baptized by Pierre the Unicorn, was attracting too much attention. It was to drawing, drawing too much attention That's to right. the shop. So he blessed it, sent it back up here. And, and, and guys, I'm going to check this out tomorrow on the lift. We're going to go through it just like Pierre did. And Samuel, how, how long have you been into the uh, classic Mercedes? I would say around 15 to 17 years. So and you've been doing this a while. Not too bad. Uh, it was as a result of all my travels, primarily in the Middle East and Africa, where I keep kept seeing again and again and again the oldest cars on the roads were Mercedes, particularly the diesel ones. Taxis would commonly have a million miles on them. And I said, I, I, I like the look of the car, I like what it represents, I like the history of it, and I like, of course, the way it was built. And that's how it started my uh, affection with strictly the Mercedes-Benz uh, classic cars. Well, I have to give it to you, that is the coolest car garage I've ever seen. Well, thank you. You have the in oriental rugs laid out under the cars, and then those car covers are very nice. Very nice, yeah. So where are we headed now? We're going to go to uh, a Quebecois French restaurant. All right. Uh, I think you'll appreciate that. Very good food. I'm very excited. Guys, we're we going to go uh, We're going to go eat some fine French cuisine and uh, get some sleep and then we're going to see you tomorrow and get this on the lift and get it outside and show you all around this car. So we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, guys, it's it's the next morning and we pushed the car out of the garage uh, cuz we don't want to get diesel fumes, uh, you know, in the in the garage into the house. And so right now we're going to do a uh, cold start video. Let's see. So we got the glow plug light there. There we go. Look at that. Fires up. One rotation. Now we're going to take it down to the uh, take it down to the mechanic shop and put it up on the lift and I'm actually going to drive it down there it's only about a mile away but guys that's the only test drive you're going to get on this video on this car because this is uh, this is an art piece with 1500 miles on it so we're not going to drive it more than that you mind if I turn it off and just show the guys the uh let's see Show the guys this car. Yeah, guys, look at these seats. I mean, there you go. That's what a new seat from Mercedes in 1985 looks like. There you go. That's what brand new wind lace looks like. Now, guys, you've seen this on a lot of my cars. Um, there you go. This is the trim around the doors. This is the nicest, most flawless, lowest mile original 300d i've ever seen in my life and a lot of this stuff guys you've seen on my cars um but there's just some extra little something about this car that's nicer than all the other ones i've seen and i guess because it was it never used you know now i think he has the floor mats uh taken out um he might have those back in the shop we'll put those back in here of course he might have been about to clean underneath there look at the nets the elastic band still flexible you know this is this is what a never used car looks like oh wow the doors even sound a little different <laughs> that's awesome let's go around and show you your i think your floor mats might be inside everything's out i, I don't leave anything in the car okay you take it out just everything's out the cocoa mats the floor mats the original... oh you even got cocoa mats i have everything yeah cool when i uh, put it away to sleep everything comes out i will let it run for five minutes just to you can go ahead and fire it back up been sleeping and yeah let it run it's been on a trickle charger for the last several months just in the garage. You mind popping the hood? 
I'm just showing these guys all around. Oh yeah, check out the uh, check out the carpets. There you go. That's what new carpet in a 300D looks like from the factory. Uh, one thing I particularly noticed, the dash, like, see how crisp the lines are? So the vinyl covering on the, on the dash is so tight. Like, uh, I don't know if you can see this in the video, just how crisp and tight all the lines are. And the grain in the dash is very subtle. Sorry, there's some sun reflecting through the windshield, but I just, I was noticing that this morning and the wood, like this Sobrano wood, see how bright it is? That That's basically what it looks like when I send it off to Madeira Concepts. I know there's a reflection there, but you guys can see the condition of this. Yeah. And the wood grain. just beautiful sorry for the uh, sun glare the Sun is coming up over st. Paul Bay here and it's shining right over here where we're standing all the little door strikers like the rubber is perfect condition the B pillar piping like yeah that's just remarkable this is, uh, guys, this is not so much a, a car. This, this is an art piece. I mean, a 1500 mile 85-300D. Yeah, this is, this is basically an art piece um, that needs to go into someone's collection, you know, inside, in a warehouse or a showroom. Like, this, this is not something that anybody is gonna be driving every day. Still has the original R12. I mean, this is the original car. See, you can still see the Cosmoline from the factory, the Cosmoline spray that got on here. All of the rubber pieces are just beautiful condition. All the fluids are fresh in here. All the fluids were, uh, I think Pierre actually did all the fluids and filters. All the stickers. Even the zinc plating on the battery hold down, see that? Just remarkable, it's all still there. The little, uh, these are the rubber like tabs that the hood hinge slides against when you close the hood. They're still in place. Just an incredible car. Look at the grill slats. I mean, it, it's brand new. Check that out. Have you ever seen an emblem as bright as that? It's just, it's just remarkable. Anyway, let's, uh, we're gonna get this down to the shop and I'm gonna put it up on the lift and I'm gonna show you guys underneath this car. So uh, be back in a couple of seconds. Here we are at the local shop here in St. Paul, the little downtown area. And uh, these, these gentlemen are going to uh, put it up on the lift for us. All right, guys, we have it up on the lift. Uh, the AC just, or the heater just kicked on, so hopefully you guys can hear. But what I want to do is start with going around kind of at eye level and show you inside the wheel wells, the bumpers, uh, and then we're going to go under the car. So, guys, look at this. This is 100% uh, original how it left the factory. Uh, you can see the zinc plating is still on the sway bar uh, bushing caps here. Guys, that's the original Bilstein shock cover. You can see the springs 
There's the original factory markings. They barely have any dirt on them. Uh, you know, it's just it's just flawless condition up in here. You can still see the Cosmoline spray up in here. The zinc plating is still on the bolts that hold the uh, the inner fender liner. See that? Even back behind the tire, there's your uh, your drain. So, <clears throat> of course, the, the the molding, the trim is. I mean, it, it looks brand new. The uh, the bumper. That's that's a brand new 1,500 mile bumper. Here we go. Look up here. There's not even a rock chip on this car. And see, we, there's a little dust right there. I just wiped off the dust. Uh, guys, that's as good as it gets. I've never seen a 300D in better condition than this car. Let's go take a look over here. Look at it. Look at the upper control arm boot. It looks brand new. There's zinc plating still on the nut. Just, <laughs> just absolutely remarkable. See all the zinc plating still on the uh, screws that hold the liner in. Now, keep in mind, this is a second set of bunt wheels. He also has the original bunt wheels with the original tires. I think that was earlier in the video. So down here in the rocker panels, all of the original paint, you can see there's no, no rust, corrosion, no, no nothing. Excuse the noise, I'm in an active mechanic shop here, so. Look at that, there's still Cosmoline spray that got right here. Truly incredible. Let's go look at the back bumper, the, the tail lights. And you see the original factory orange peel? You can see it right there. That's the original paint, guys. That's these original cars. You could see the orange peel in the original paint. See it's see all the waviness in there like that. That's what they looked like when they left the factory. They're not like modern cars. Well, I guess you know modern cars still have orange peel like that, but that's definitely has never been cut and buffed uh, in a professional detail shop. That's the original condition. And we'll just go ahead, look in this side, you know, same condition. And now let's go ahead and get the car up on the lift. Guys, what you see here, that's Cosmoline. That is not rust. See how it can pick off that waxy substance right there? That's Cosmoline that's dripping out of the uh, jack point right here. That's not rust. That's that waxy protective substance. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring it on up on the lift. All right, guys, uh, here we go. We're gonna start here in the front valence. And the first thing I noticed, uh, you know, Mercedes would, they would put the, like this factory kind of an undercoating spray uh, along the front here. And you can see like, there's the original spray right there. You see the Cosmoline that's dripping down here and the Cosmoline wax. See right there, that waxy substance. There's still, it's still here. You can see the, look at the bolts on the bumper up here, all the zinc plating. There again, see all the Cosmoline that was sprayed up in here? That's brand new condition, new old stock. And look, we get under here, um, all the zinc plating is still on all the original lines. Uh, the paint, see all the suspension still has that factory paint on them. The ball joint boots are not ripped. There's the sticker still on the uh, dust shield for the brakes. Incredible. Let's go look over here. There's yeah, there's the original sticker. Uh, look at the how clean the bunts are. It's not even barely any brake dust in there. Um, yep, ball joint still good over here. Again, I'm just looking to see all the cosmoline that's dripping down from where they would spray that everywhere. Look at that. See, that's the all the cosmoline they would spray like under the transmission. See it right up in here, all that like gold looking stuff. The zinc plating. Still on the lines. Look how incredibly clean. <laughs> There's no drips of oil anywhere. These, these are the oil cooler lines. There's the zinc plating on the oil filter housing bolts. There's the oil filter housing. There's not even any oil anywhere. 
we're looking at here there's the original Bilstein shocks um, gosh I, that brake line looks so nice I don't know if that's a new brake line or if that's actually the original I'm assuming it's the original it even has the caps still on the brake calipers uh, there's the bleeder screw that's the original cap all your cosmoline and zinc plating still on all the bolts look at that I've, I've actually never seen that before it's still on the engine shock so guys that's gosh that's probably the nicest exhaust I've ever seen there's barely even any surface rust on it all the zinc plating you can see the cosmoline spray uh, right here in this area it's absolutely remarkable all the the, the brake lines the, co uh, the the zinc plating on the clips let's move on here to the back of the vehicle all I see all the original paint still on all the control arms rear control arms even the zinc plating on the bolts for the flex discs like I said, got, oh wow, look back there, look at the boots. Look at the axle boots. They look, that, that's what they look like when you have them redone. <clears throat> Man, I don't know if these are original or not. That's a rear sway bar uh, end link. Uh, see, the boot is still on there. That, that could be the original one, it's just so nice. Maybe Pierre put that in there, I don't know, because that looks brand new. Look at that. All the bushings back here, the rubber on the sway bar. Wow, look back here. Even the factory paint is still on the rear differential. Oh, that's cool. I guess this is like a, a sealant. They would maybe paint this like sealant around. Maybe there was like a weld right under here from the factory. So they would paint that protective sealant. Yeah, I see it right here too, around the uh, upper, where the shock, uh, uh, the spring mounts. Wow, look at the exhaust. Ne never seen a muffler that nice. That's, you know, that's the original Mercedes muffler. There's the Mercedes emblem. You can see some slight cracking in the original paint. Just absolutely remarkable. Look up here. So this is an area that you almost always get rust up here on this upper let's see there we go see this upper panel that's the uh the panel that actually holds on this top bumper piece right here that rubber piece and the zinc still on the bolts there's not a speck of rust anywhere just uh, see all the cosmoline up in here just absolutely remarkable I mean, I know I've said this 10 times at this point, but this is what it would look like brand new when it left the factory. There's that same sealant. See, like the, the paintbrush where they would paint on? That's a seam sealer is what that is. So there's probably a weld behind here, and then that seam sealer that they would put uh, over where the seam would, where the seam would connect. Oh, look at that. That's the vent tube for the... Usually these are all black and nasty. That's the vent tube for the fuel tank. Look, the zinc plating is still on the hose clamps. You can see all the spray, cosmoline up in here. Absolutely remarkable condition. Look at the transmission mount. It looks brand new. Look at the back of the transmission. look up in here the original flex uh, I'm sorry the transmission center support bearing all the zinc plating yeah this is uh, see all the spray all the cosmoline that was sprayed right underneath here truly incredible even the little so this is a clamp for the transmission cooler line and the little rubber like uh, it's like a almost a, a rubber piece that goes around the line before the clamp goes on there. 
these little rubber pieces are still here, still intact. The oil cooler line, even the bracket on the radiator is still zinc plated. That's remarkable. Original Mercedes hose clamps, the hoses are perfect. Even the receiver dryer looks new in here for the air conditioner. Truly remarkable chance of a lifetime vehicle, guys. Let me go ahead and uh, lower this down off the lift and we're gonna do a little test drive. Okay, we just got back from the uh, mechanic shop after inspecting the vehicle. And uh, now I'm gonna take it out for a test drive. And guys, this is uh, you know not gonna be a very long test drive. I don't wanna put miles on this car. But what we want to do is just confirm, you know, the transmission shifts through all the gears correctly and it, all the normal driving stuff. So, and maybe if I'm lucky, I can talk Samuel into letting me do a zero to 60 test just to show off the help of the engine. So let's go ahead and hop in. All right, guys, we, uh, we actually came downtown and filled up with some fuel and... Now we're gonna go on a little test drive. Sam, you'll have to tell me which way to go here. Left. Okay. So we have the climate control currently set uh, on about a medium temperature. And uh, the heat and AC work well. Wow, the steering is so tight. Right. Are we we're going right here or just straight? straight? Okay. The steering wheel, uh, the like the texture on the uh, steering wheel, this feels brand new. That's I always like to point out the first things I notice in a vehicle, guys, and the first two things I noticed on this car, um, the steering is extremely tight. It basically feels like I just rebuilt all the front suspension. Um, the shocks also, we're going on a rough, uh, a rough road right here, and the shocks are perfect. And you can see, of course, uh, the gauges. Uh, now we've been idling the car because uh, we just did a photo shoot, so it's a little warmer right now. Uh, but the temp is uh, correctly where it's supposed to be. Uh, fuel gauge works, the clock is working, RPM gauge, and you can see the tachometer uh, rolling over. Uh, so everything works there. And if Samuel will let me, we're gonna actually do a zero to 60 mile per hour test up here can we do that sure and I actually just felt it shift through all the gears smooth as it should and we're actually gonna just pull over right here and then guys we're going to go uh, do a 0 to 60 test this is a perfect place to do it okay you guys watch the uh, speedometer <laughs> all right ready here we go Perfect shift. Actually, we might catch up to this car in front of us. Okay, we did a zero to 50 test. How was that? <laughs> I just caught, caught up with the car in front of us. But uh, immediately I noticed the shifting is perfect. It's shifting exactly how it's supposed to. Very smooth. You know, this is the 85 model. So uh, these 85 models have a little bit different vacuum system for the transmission. Wow, look how beautiful that is out there. I don't know if you guys can see that in the video yeah this feels like a new engine well I mean it is a new engine <laughs> literally it, yeah what are we up to now 1,594 miles and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and accelerate up this hill just to show these guys so you can watch our speed here guys we are going uphill plenty of power Sorry, I know the sun's in your eyes there. I would have to say, Samuel, I'd have to say this is the best driving 100% original yes. uh, 300D I've ever driven. We're driving into the sun, so sorry for the reflection, guys. Yeah, look 
back out there. There's St. Paul Bay. Uh, cruise control is working. And we're going to take a right, right up yeah. here. And guys, that's uh, that's going to be it for the test drive. I'm all, we only put a couple of miles on it. But uh, you don't want to rack up the miles on a car like this. But it drives fantastic. I really don't need to see any more. The car speaks for itself. And I'll get up here and I'll go ahead and show you guys all the uh, the windows and blinkers and I'll show you everything works on this vehicle. Uh, you mean to turn in right here, Samuel? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll just put it in park and we're of course going to, um, we'll do the radio. Let's see here. Uh, we'll do the radio. Is there a station? Okay, there we go. We have a, a French station there. I'll, I'll put up the antenna. Let me show you guys that the antenna works. Antenna comes up perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the radio, show you that the antenna uh, correctly goes down. There you go. It correctly retracts. Let's see, we'll do the, the passenger and driver side. There you go, there's, there's the passengers. Roll them back up here. Look how smooth they are. It's like they've never been rolled down. Here we go, here's the driver's side. Yeah, perfect. We'll do the, uh, let's do the sunroof. Perfect. And you can see the wind dam is intact. It, it pops up. And then the wind dam correctly shuts down. Here we go. Uh, what else can we show you here? Let's do, uh, let me straighten out the wheel here. We'll do blinkers. Uh, I'm not going to do the squirters, guys, because I don't want to get that uh, on the car. Um, you know, this is all original paint. I don't want all that fluid to get on the car. Uh, we'll do the blinkers. I mean, I'm sorry, the flashers. There's a, uh, the mirror. I just turned it out, turned it in, turned it up, turned it down. Mirror works perfectly. Now I'm going to press the driver's side door lock and you can see the vacuum system works correctly. I just heard the uh, trunk and the fuel door also lock. And I'll unlock it. You can see they all come up exactly like they're supposed to. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll put it on AC, on high. The center vents uh, correctly actuate. The center vents just opened up because when you know when you have it on heat, those are closed and it only comes out the side. And uh, yep, there we go. The AC is working. It is blowing cold. I'll turn that off. And guys, that's about it. We'll do the horn. Uh, let's show you the fader switch works. We'll turn this on. All right, let's put our antenna back up. Okay. There we go. It correctly fades to the back. Now it's correctly faded to the front. Turn that back off. Uh, oh, here's the rear light uh, right here. I'll show you that. See the rear light correctly turns on and off. And guys, that's it. Now, of course, the, the Mercedes service manual says a healthy vacuum system uh, shuts off in two seconds. So ready? One, one thousand. Okay, about one and a half seconds shut off. So that's excellent. All right, guys, that is it for the uh, test drive. And we'll do a last little walk around video here. Look at the anodized aluminum. That's uh, perfect condition. If I've ever seen a 
perfect car, then this is a perfect car. Now there is a cover. He has this protective cover over the back. Um, let me pull that off just to show you what's under here. Oh yes, also the, the original floor mats, he has them stored in the shop. Um, so we, you know, we can put those back in here. They're just as nice as the front, the front carpets, the front mats. Look at that package tray. It looks brand new. And there we go. The original first aid kit. I'll just leave this back here. Well, let's see if I can put this back up here for him. There we go. Uh, wow, that feels so good back here. Seats are super nice. Guys, that's uh, the nicest 300D I've ever seen. 1,500, I think we're at 1,596 miles now. Let's look in the fuel door back here. All the stickers are still here. beautiful car there's the original um to the 300d this one's for the coupe so there's the original uh carpet and then there's uh one of the mats that goes over the top of it and he's getting the other one right now uh, and there's the one for the driver's side oh there it is right there that's it this is the other one for the uh the back of the 300d here so there we go. These uh, perfect condition guys, I just wanted to show you these. Um, that's just an outline where they were stacked on top of each other. Just wanted to see that those were in excellent condition. Okay guys, I just wanna quickly go over um, all the documentation that comes with the vehicle. Now, as I said, this was registered in Florida uh, before uh, Samuel brought it here. Here's a copy of that Florida title. Um, so he's going to import it back into uh, the U.S. and bring it down to Florida and then get the title reissued. So it will have a U.S. title right here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six sets of keys uh, with the car and three uh, leather holders. Um, oh, this is cool. So these are some of the original uh, keys without the plastic ends, you know, like this. But there's a spare plastic end right here. Uh, and that's also an antenna grommet. I guess an extra antenna grommet. What, there's nothing wrong with the one on the car. Uh, here's another one of those uh, spare. The plastic part that goes on the end of the key. It's just covering up his address there. But we can see the original owner actually purchased it in 85. Uh, there it is. Mercedes-Benz Manhattan. And he actually registered it to his computer business. So it was registered to his company. Um, and here there's the maintenance booklet. Uh, of course, this car never, you know, it's got 1,500 miles on it. It never had a chance to have a maintenance history. It's just had a couple of oil changes. Um, so th there is no maintenance history because it has 1,500 miles on it. Uh, owner's manual. Uh, cruise control instructions. This is the original hang tag that went on the spare tire in the trunk. Here's the climate control uh, instructions. There's the uh, English side. Uh, roadside assistance brochure. Looks like, a, oh, that's how to vent the battery. Uh, here's the dealer network. Here's the Becker radio operating instructions. Not sure what this is here. Something to do with the battery. Um, and this was in case you needed to know how to install the sunroof wind deflector, but it does not have a wind deflector on the sunroof. So anyway, there's all the original documentation that came in the glove box and we have the plastic, uh, folder too, that all this went in. Okay. And there's the original plastic binder. All those documents are in here and, uh, all the keys. So this, uh, comes in the glove box with the car. 
All right, guys, I just wanted to get one final shot of this beautiful uh, garage and these cars before I leave St. Paul Bay. Uh, so take a look at this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video series and officially the coolest garage and the nicest 300D in the world. So hope you enjoyed the video series, guys, and we will see you next time. So yeah. I wanted everyone to see what, what your opinion was on the vehicle. So I serviced the car about two years ago. And, um, you know, it was interesting because bought the car from its original owner who lived in New Jersey. So wanted somebody to take a look at the car. So I put him in touch with Jamie Kopchinski at Classic Workshop in Hackettstown, New Jersey. And Jamie went to go inspect the car. And when I called him and asked his opinion of it, he said, yeah, this is the real deal. You know, it's an ultra low mileage 123, ultra low mileage 123s that were parked because the person who owned them didn't really know what to do with the car. They're like, I'm not going to drive it. You know, so do I service it or what? The guy who owned it actually had had it serviced pretty regularly. And so the nice thing about it was that all the services in the car were still completed at a local Mercedes dealership, which... If you're in certain areas, is a lot less risky than dealing with your typical import car repair shop that doesn't really know what they're doing. I can't imagine what kind of service you would need to do on a 1,500-mile, maybe the first valve adjustment. Well, you'd have to do – well, no, you really should be adjusting your valves every three years, whether you drive the car or not. Now, some of us are better about that than others, but I'm just saying like you're not going to blow it up. But if you want to keep the car in optimal running condition, that's a good idea. But fluid services are a big one. I mean, you can't just expect a car to go for 30 years with its original transmission fluid. And well, then there are, other, sorry, there, there, are, there are other items that are going to deteriorate with age too, like motor mounts and brake hoses. And some of the some of these items we we did, and then some of these items the previous owner did, you know. But he had Every few years, he had taken it to the Mercedes dealership and had things like the oil change, the transmission fluid change, the brake fluid change, the coolant change, um, the um, what else? The rear axle oil change. So he got the five key fluid and he did them reliably, which helped make sure the car was in decent mechanical condition as well. You know, in addition, I don't think you want to be running around in belts from 1985. You know. Right. So some point the car had gotten belts now as far as our work goes in the car there really wasn't a lot to do like i thought about handling this car from the perspective of oh i'm going to sort this car out but it's like what's what's really the right thing to do with a car like this and really the right thing to do with the car like this is to keep it as in time caps uh, in the closest condition you possibly can to when it's new even if it means that certain aspects of some parts have deteriorated over the years and that's one of the reasons why we forewent replacing things like guide rod bushings, even though there was some deterioration. The guide rod boots, like the internal boots, I was like, well, they still work well. You know, they, they feel tight. You know, they haven't disintegrated. Um, there were some things that were visually helpful, like replacing rear sway bar links and brake hoses. I, I saw the new rear sway bar links. It looked like the brake hoses were new, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did all that stuff. We, were, we do with every car that comes here because you can't really trust the other stuff. But um, I I did the the way that I I sort of looked at this car was like, what services can you perform without interfering with the originality of the car? And so. We did all the fluid services per request, plus we did a valve adjustment. Um, the air conditioning had been converted from R12 to 134, and the original compressor is still on the car. It has some leakage, but in all honesty, I, I had to charge the AC to some extent. I didn't have to do like a full recharge on it, but I had to charge it to some extent. And when I did that, it actually worked, you know, the whole the whole like automatic climate control system, I would say functioned as you'd expect from a super low mileage car, you know, yeah, I noticed that that was working. It appeared to work. The center vents were opening. Yeah. So, 
Um, now, as far as driving this car goes, like when it when a car comes to my shop like this, the goal is to try to avoid driving it unless you know that there's a reason for it to be driven. So my test driving the car was very minimal. I think that I put maybe two somewhere between two and three miles on it when I was yeah. test driving. Yeah, I did too. I think I drove it three miles. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the next owner probably is going to drive it maybe a little more, but like how, how much more is really necessary, you know, like indulging in something like that is like opening like a 1947 bottle of like, um, oh man, what's the, what's that Bordeaux that sells for uh, Romani Conti? It would be like opening like a 50 year old bottle of Domain Romani Conti or something. You just, it's like a treat to be able to enjoy something like that, you know? And that's really how I felt. Like I've never had I don't drink very much and I can only imagine like how sophisticated a wine snob you have to be to enjoy like a demand Romani Conti. But yeah. I felt like when I took that car for like a short test drive. I got like a little taste of something, you know, yeah. unrepeatable. You know what I mean? The way I was, I, was, I think this car, <clears throat> this is not, someone is not purchasing a car. I think someone is purchasing an art piece. This is an art piece that needs to be displayed in a gallery. That's how yeah, I do this vehicle. Right. It's like like when I get people that ask me about super low mileage cars because they want to make them into a daily driver. I'm like, huh? Are you okay? You know, like you can go buy, if you want a daily driver, you go buy a 250,000 mile 300D and go through the car and then make it like, you know what you do, make it a decent usable car, you know? Yeah. That way, you're not ruining something that can't be made again. This is the kind of car that, like, if you're going to enshrine a W123, like a North American spec W123, this car is like a shrine quality car. And then you look at what some people, like, if you look at, um, what's his name, Mark, um, Mark Kosovich in the UK, like, what yeah. Mark charges to restore a 123. Like a, re a restored car is still never going to be quite this good. It's never the same. It's only it's never, original once. It's never the same. Exactly. It's like, um, it's like comparing like a, um, oh man, it's like comparing like a vintage Rolex, like a real super handmade vintage Rolex to like a modern Breitling or something. You, know that they're both like quality watches but like the vintage rolex is like the the watch like you can't really you can't really like go buy like a brand new mercedes and compare it to this thing either because this is like a this car is like such an unrepeatable car there there aren't how many i don't know how many sub let's just let's just look at a category like a five thousand mile 300d um how many sub 5,000 mile 300 Ds are there? And then there's like a subset of that. That's like sub 2,500 mile 300 Ds. And what was the mileage in the car, John? So after my test drive, it was 1,596 miles. And then he said, we're parking it. I don't want it to hit 1,600 miles. And I was like, yeah, I agree. Right. Then you look at the subset of roughly 1,500 mile cars there are, right? You know, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's like closer to a 1,500 mile car than a 2,500 mile car. You're really not going to experience much deterioration between a 1,500 mile car and a 5,000 mile car. But the thing about this car is that it was so exceptionally well taken care of that it has like the air of a new car. Like everything's still in plastic. Um, the first owner was really careful because I don't think he really bought the car to drive it. I think he had a fetish for this car, sort of like the next owner is going to have, you know. Now, I'm sure some of you are going to ask, like, how did I, what steps did I take to verify that it was the real thing? Because I had to advise the, uh, the current owner on his purchase of the car. And so um, I have to disclose my relationship with the owner a little bit. So he is like a friend of mine. He's not like just a customer. So a lot of, a lot of my customers are like family. Like I try to treat them like I would family. Sometimes that means that you have difficulties, but ultimately your goal is to like resolve everything, you know? Um, and I've experienced, um, 
a great relationship with and recently he had a 1972 250 sedan sorted bias as well which you know isn't exactly the easiest car to make into a perfect car like a 123 series but i have a great relationship with the owner of this car and he's he's been really good to me you know he's treated me really well so i i try to make sure that like i support him in every step of the way so he asked me for my opinion about this car when he was purchasing it and based on the information that jamie gave me and the the photos i had of the car and its information about its service history i green lighted him because i said even if this car was a 50,000 mile car it would be an exceptional condition but there's no way based on the condition of this car that um it's it's like got any more mileage on it than posted and here are the reasons Num number one um i i verified using my own two eyes, so you have to take my word on this, okay, that the car has its original speedometer. So it doesn't have um it doesn't have like a 1983 dated speedometer in it, or it doesn't have like a replacement version that was installed in like 1987 or 88 or 89 or 95, you know. Like it's the speedometer that is dated with the car's build date. Now, off the top of my head, I can't remember that build date. Okay, just you'll have to forgive me for that. I think it was it was October. I looked at that October um, of eighty four. Yeah, and based on based on my recollection, it was like September of eighty four. And so most of the time, the speedometer units installed were produced like the month before. So um, I don't think the instrument cluster had ever been out of the dash before, which isn't what I used. I actually used like a little camera that I snaked up in there to observe it with, which is you know not not exactly easy and then when i couldn't see it i moved the cluster out just enough to be able to see it you oh, know and stuff great so, right. so pierre just to to piggyback on what you're saying about verifying uh the mileage and, and matching up the speed the gauge cluster um yeah you know, when i was there i put it up on a lift and i recorded all this you'll see it in the video um i've been under a lot of these cars you know with 30 40 000 miles and just from looking under the car, I could tell like the zinc plating was still on all the all the head bolts. The, yeah, and there's co cosmoline everywhere. Yeah, there's cosmoline like dripping from weird little crevices, and there's no way this was ever dry ice blasted or none of that crap. This was the right. real, real deal. It, 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 exactly. So I based my mileage assessment on like several parameters. One of them was the insane presence of cosmoline i mean cosmoline will eventually like melt and come off if you drive the car into real real wor world conditions and that didn't happen here you know the car was never really driven it's never been pressure washed which i love so if you're the next mm -hmm. owner don't pressurize the cosmoline off that is your part of your proof that you have a super original car yeah second of all i looked at all the hose clamps in the car the car has all of its original hose clamps um the insulation on the ac manifold original right it's not all that stuff off. is there you know even that little hose behind the glove box is probably still there um yeah. i mean it has what else did it what else did that car have that just like blew me away um every single plastic loom tie in the car's wiring harness you know, those little openable loom ties all still there in yeah. fact there were some on that car that I didn't even realize I was missing on other cars. All right. Well, anyway, look, here's here's my conclusion about this car, okay? Um, I don't know how many other cars there are like this, but it can't be many. I think if there's any 123 out there that's so let's look at let's look at some other sales of, of comparable ultra low mileage cars. Do you remember? Was it a 300D 2.5 or was it an E300 that sold on Bring a Trailer for like $110,000? Oh, that was was that the E300 with like 7,000 miles on it? That went right. And what did it bring again? Was it 110 or 120? I yeah, I can't remember, but I, I was shocked. It was the I think it was white. It might have been white. Right. Yeah. So it the way this car the, the way this car presents, it should actually dwarf the value of that car. Oh, this like is a superior vehicle in every way. <laughs> that's an understatement. That's a 24. We're not, that's apples to bricks. We're not making right, that good. Right, 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 right. So, like, if I were to look at a car like this, you know, honestly, really, honestly, truly, like 150 to 170, 165, somewhere in there, 
Like, I think that that, that value may freak you out, but how do you price a car that's like unrepeatable? How do you do that? That's the problem. It's, uh, it's hard. It, it's like, this is, uh, it's almost a priceless it's, vehicle. It's unrepeatable. Like if you look at this car and you're wondering if you can afford it or not, you, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking about calling Stuttgart, the, the museum and seeing if Mercedes wants it. I don't think they can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy doing warranty work. You know, in all honesty, they just might not be interested. I mean, well, no, I, I, I actually don't think that at all. I just don't think that like that car, like a car like that belongs in the hands of like somebody who's a tried and true 123 enthusiast. Yeah. You know, the, the, the whole thing about original cars, like going back into the care of Mercedes is nice. It's cool. It's, it's neat to think about, but really that car belongs in the hands of somebody that's been waiting for that car their whole life. And that person exists, you know, the person exists. And, um, I'm still, I don't know. I'm, I'm still not entirely sure really how I'm going to feel if he parts at this thing. Cause I warned him, I said, if you sell it, you're not going to find another one. Oh, no, so, there's, there's not another one like this. Well, may, uh, not that I know of. Yeah, well, I'll tell, I'll, I'll, I'll say it in French. For, say, say le seul exemple dans le monde. It's probably the only example in the world. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I wanted a more perfect 123. I don't know where I'd find one. So that's my conclusion. That's a great <laughs> conclusion. Well, look, thank you for hopping on this Zoom call. And, uh, I'll splice this into the video so people can hear what you had to say. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, just don't make them watch me for more than five minutes. They'll get bored. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you later. All right. Thanks, John. Bye. See ya.